Hey y'all, how y'all doing? I'm back with my review for Growing Up Hip Hop Season 6, Episode 31, Let's Elope Now, alright? So let's just get right into it, and I'm not going in any particular order this week, I'm just going to go off the top of my head, and I'm going to start with um, Egypt and Sam. I think it's um very unfortunate that Egypt wants to rush and get married to a guy who potentially could be serving a lengthy sentence in prison, Okay. Not only could he be headed behind bars, but he is the reason behind the breakdown of T.T. and Egypt's relationship, in my opinion. People have to sometimes go through things in order to learn and grow. I think that, you know, the thing with Egypt is that she's naive and doesn't want to listen to anybody when they're trying to talk some sense into her. She's a young woman with her whole life ahead of her. And it's like, why would she want to waste her life away on Sam, especially if he's going to be in prison? So she wants Sam and all of us to know that she's going to wait for him um, if he has to do a stint in prison. And last time I heard, he was looking at like a decade or more behind bars. If he does that amount of time, which I doubt, but if he does, he could come out with, with a whole new outlook on life. One that doesn't include women, if you know what I mean. So for her to even consider wasting her life away like that, it's just sad. I guess she'll be on the next season of Love during lockup. And all that talk that Sam doing about him not wanting Egypt to wait on him and talking about it'll be over if he go to prison between him and Egypt and he's going to break things off or whatever. It's like, let's be clear. And I think I said this before. The only reason he's saying that shit is because he knows that Egypt ain't going nowhere. He knows that Egypt is indeed stupid enough to wait until he gets out of prison if he goes. Who else going to put money on his books? Who else going to accept his calls from prison? Like, he's so full of shit. And I'm not knocking whatever it is that Egypt feel like she has with Sam, you know? She has a right to be with whoever she wants to be with. She says that he's made her happy, and that's fine. But I'm thinking that she doesn't require much, which is why Sam has probably made her happy. I feel like she allows him to think for her, speak for her, and whatever he says, she just goes along with it. Just like when he was um telling people that T.T. wanted him. Egypt believed that shit, didn't she? Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. And I said before, I feel like Sam came in as an opportunist. He knew who Egypt's parents were. And he also saw Egypt as somebody he could, you know, take advantage of. Because she was so naive. And also, I feel like he may not be that into girls, which is probably why it seems like Egypt is slowly transforming into more of what Sam may be into. And you know, when you look over that relationship, it's almost as if he didn't want her to be close with anybody like her cousins or her friends. He wanted her all to himself so he could control and manipulate her without any interference from him. Remember that season when he was calling uh, Egypt Trepper or some shit like that? I believe it was a name, yeah, with a mixture of Tretch and Pepper's name. So that was like a code name when he would want her to act stupid, right? Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. And then when she got into it with Brianna, it was like Sam, he, he he was so happy. And he was so happy when he went around telling people that T.T. wanted him, knowing damn well she didn't. And plus, he had a couple of kids, no money, not even his own place because him and Egypt was staying with Pepper. So it's like, why would anybody want, why would anybody but Egypt want to fuck with Sam? T.T. didn't want him. You know what I'm saying? Why would anybody but Egypt want to fuck with Sam, especially when he got his ass up on stage at her event, singing a fucking homemade ass song, talking about, I'm not straight, but I'm not gay. It's just ridiculous that Egypt can't see that you know, Sam is a root, the root of the issues that she's having. So she went to go have a conversation with T.T. And the only way T.T. was, you know, said that she was going to try to forgive and forget was if Egypt was willing to see where she and Sam went wrong. But Egypt doesn't feel like it's on her or Sam. And T.T. doesn't feel like it was on her either. So I'm not sure how they're going to move forward. The way T.T. was explaining it. She felt like it was all about Sam's encounters with other people, which have been negative, and how Egypt has reacted to him. So she's saying that, you know, the both of them, her and Sam, do hurtful shit. And Egypt claims that, you know, uh, she, no, what did she say? 
Egypt said that she wasn't choosing Sam over her family, which was exactly what she was doing, even though she said that she wasn't. So it's just like whatever at this point. I guess time will tell if she and TT will, you know, get back to where they used to be. And I didn't even realize that it's been about two years since they were cool with each other. I guess that would be accurate since Egypt, you know, hasn't met TT's son yet. Bottom line, ain't nobody about to be putting up with Sam shit and Egypt defending his stupid ass. He is very much so part of the problem. For example, when Egypt went to go see Sam at um, his cousin's house, he was um, she was telling him about the conversation that she and TT had just had. And Sam's stupid ass was asking her who won. It's like, little bitch, it wasn't a fight. It was a conversation between two family members who were once close before your ugly ass came into the picture. He irritated the fuck out of me. Who won? He makes me sick. Can't stand him. Y'all, I didn't watch all of the uh, seasons. I didn't watch all of the seasons. So, in y'all opinion, what did TT do to um, Egypt other than try to warn her about Sam? Because I honestly don't know. The way I see it, T.T. tried to warn Egypt about Sam, and Sam knew that and made up the shit about T.T. wanting him, okay? And Egypt fell for it. Their relationship crumbled. That's how I see it. Please feel free to fill in empty, any empty spaces for me. Like I said, the way I see it, Egypt, <sighs> she may be naive, but she's grown. If she want to be with Sam, like she has been for over three years, let her. She'll find out whether or not it was a good decision. As we all know, they had already got married down in Vegas. I feel like she rushed it just because Titi had got married and wanted to prove, you know, the naysayers wrong about Sam and her. So she went and rushed to get married. It's like her whole life is about Sam, even when it comes to her music, which is why her daddy was telling her that, you know, it may be labels that don't want to work with Sam, whether they're together or not. It's like she tries to force Sam on people and don't have her own identity. Just because she fuck with Sam don't mean other people have to. And if they decide that they don't want to, just like T.T. and Brianna did, they're going to not fuck with Egypt too. And she just got to deal with that. So Egypt was talking to Sam and he was telling her about his case or trial or whatever being pushed back further. And um, Egypt decided that she didn't want to allow that to get in the way of them getting married. So she told Sam that she wanted to marry him now and felt like, you know, they should elope. I mean, they grown. They're going to do what they're going to do. So, you know, I'm tired of talking about them. So I'm going to move on to other folks. It wasn't much going on in this episode, though. So, y'all, let's talk about Angela. Angela decided to go and see a doctor to talk about freezing her eggs, Okay. Vanessa went with her. However, she couldn't go up into the actual office with her, so she waited down in the car. And I would have bopped Vanessa across her damn head because she had Vanessa thinking that, no, Vanessa had Angela thinking that she was going to go up with her to speak with the doctors and stuff, and she said that she couldn't because it was real exclusive. It's like, why did she wait until they pulled up, you know, in front of the place to say that? But anyway, Angela found out that the process cost about $9,000, nine to $15,000, I think. The process consisted of her taking three shots per day for about 10 days, I believe. And Angela hates shots, so she's frowning upon that. The doctor told her that um, sperm would have to be injected into her eggs or whatever, and she asked Angela if she had a donor, and she didn't, which was why she was there to find out about freezing her eggs until she found a donor slash boyfriend so the doctor did an ultrasound on Angela um while she was there and Angela you know Angela went up in that dress like she had just came from prom but anyway <laughs> the ultrasound looked really good her uterus looked good um she had a nice amount of eggs and it was possible that she could you know hold off before freezing her eggs so it's one more step that she has to go through to determine it, which is like a test having to do with her hormones. So that was pretty much it with that. Um, she basically just want to make sure that she can have more kids when she gets ready to. And, you know, when she gets herself a man, I guess, because her son SJ really wants a sibling. And I don't blame him. You know, it can be lonely being the only kid sometimes, I'm assuming. So, y'all, 
Let's move on to Lazy. Um, Lazy Bone went to meet up with Egypt and Sam at the studio, and Lazy wanted to see how Sam was holding up, you know, facing four felonies. Of course, you know, Sam's mouth was saying that he wasn't sweating it, but if he end up having to do time, he's going to be singing a different tune. And Lazy felt like Sam, you know, needed to adjust his attitude because he don't think he really get the seriousness of it all or, or the seriousness of just being in prison with no freedom, never being able to bend over, especially in the shower, having to eat and sleep when people tell you to, you know. So anyway, he was telling Lazy how he, Sam was telling Lazy Bone how he don't want to just be writing music for Egypt and Pepper. So they started talking about music. So he was saying that he was writing music for the both of them. But he wanted to be an artist as well. He was like, he didn't want to have other people get in the crowd that he deserved, okay? Um, and it's like, if you want to be an artist, why are you out there doing stupid shit? Real artists ain't out there catching four fucking felonies and stirring up bullshit. But anyway, there wasn't much going on with that scene. Egypt met up with him um, at the studio, pretty much talking about the same shit about how she hope he doesn't have to do time, but if he does, she's going to wait for him, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to move on. So y'all, like I said, I didn't put this in no particular order this week. I'm just going off the top of my head, but I guess I done saved the worst for last, which is Savannah and Cree. I honestly don't even know why they, you know, just didn't keep them off for the remainder of the season, you know? Creed called herself going over to Savannah's place to give her a talk, but it's like, who the fuck gonna give her? Who gonna, who, who gonna get her a talk? Both of them was in the wrong that day of Twist Party. Savannah came with the bullshit and Creed went along with it. Fuck all that. I'ma have your back in public and tell you you wrong in private. She should have told her her ass was wrong in public too. Just cause Savannah was with the shits didn't mean that Creed had to be. Both of them acted like animals. And they shouldn't be invited to shit else, in my opinion. And shouldn't be allowed to film anymore. Especially Savannah, because all she do is star shit. She miserable as fuck, disrespectful, and want to fight like the animal that she is. Human beings shouldn't have to be bothered with her ass. Not until she goes somewhere and learn how to act like one. She said that she had a therapist. And she need to be making daily appointments to see her. Seven days of the fucking week. So anyway, Cree came by to talk to her about, you know, squaring up on Sequoia that day at Twist Party. So Savannah tells Cree, it's your opinions for me, but go off. But anyway, Cree was telling her about exuding black excellence and how they need to, I guess, use their words to get their point across instead of violence. Says the bitch who went running across the backyard like a football player to go get little old Sequoia. How the fuck she gonna try to tell Savannah about herself when she was co-signing the shit that Savannah was doing? Especially talking shit about that girl's son. Either way, Savannah was in Savannah mode, not trying to hear nothing nobody was telling her. Oh, I don't give a fuck, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> when Cree got there, Savannah asked her um, how they were gonna open the wine because she didn't have a corkscrew. And Cree asked Savannah why she didn't have a corkscrew in her house for wine. And if you ask me, she don't need to be drinking shit but water. Because her thinking is already impaired. And at the end of the day, what the fuck she need to pop bottles for? To celebrate what? Ignorance? So she said that, you know, she was going to work on her anger and start talking to her therapist more about it, I guess. So she has issues with her parents and she has behavioral issues, Okay. They showed us a clip where she was talking to her therapist one time and she shared with us how um, she used to play on a basketball team or whatever and her mom was the coach. And some girl was talking and Savannah told the girl to shut up. Ain't nobody want to hear what she had to say. And her mama punched her in front of everybody. So I guess she's still angry about that and a lot of other shit. And if you ask me, she shouldn't have been talking to the girl like that either. That's her problem. She got a nasty ass fucking attitude and talked to people like she crazy. So even though she wasn't saying that to her mom, she still said it. And she should have been popped in my opinion. So Cree got issues with her daddy too. And I guess she used to direct that anger towards other people like Savannah is doing and was saying how Savannah needs to navigate through that. Then in another scene with Cree, I couldn't help but to hear uh, Savannah say she had the nerve to say something about 
she have to stop trying to get people to take account accountability or some shit. And I was like, how are you going to try to get somebody else to take accountability when you don't even know how to do the shit yourself? Like, are you kidding? So anyway, she be dead ass wrong, but don't get two fucks. One of the most disrespectful little bitches on the planet. But you trying to get somebody else to take accountability for their shit. Girl, bye. She act like didn't nobody take time out to raise her. And they probably didn't. But you can't go through life trying to fight everybody just because you mad at your parents. It's like, take it up with them. Because one of these days, if she don't get it together, she going to fuck around and square up with the wrong person. And they going to knock her ass into the fucking next century. Everybody ain't going to allow Savannah to be Savannah. And she had the nerve to say that she, um, she had the nerve to say that she already had a great attitude that day, but Sequoia was trying her. That's some shit she told herself so she wouldn't have to take accountability for how she acted because Sequoia didn't do shit to that girl that day. Savannah came there ready to fight. Savannah came there ready to fight. Sequoia didn't. That's why Savannah walked up to that girl like she did, got in her face, started talking major shit, and then mentioned her son. So when she says she's been working on her, I question how hard she's been working. And exactly what has she been working on? Because it couldn't be her attitude. Couldn't have been her attitude. And when it comes to Cree, she needs to lead by example. Don't be with the bullshit in public, then try to say something different behind closed doors. Because if she's going to be hanging with Savannah, knowing how Savannah act and participating in her bullshit... Then she just need to be quiet. If Savannah acting stupid at the cookout, then you need to tell her her ass acting stupid at the cookout. Otherwise, it's just like you condone her shit and you with the shits. Y'all, I'm about done with this review. Everybody got on my nerves. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to like the video and share it. And please do consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And don't forget that True Tea merchandise is now available over at Teespring. The link is right underneath the video and also in my bio. Y'all take care and I'll chat with y'all in the next one.